Okay. Hello there. Um. Peace Talks Episode 2. We are here looking at um, the situation uh, in the Palestinian Israel area. Hold on one second. And um, I want to do a design session around what peace could look like. We're in this like temporary peace and what's missing I think is the, the the conversation around where this could go and look like so that we can achieve peace and security um, and not let tens of thousands die and more um, as we've seen uh, genocides and um, land takeover movements in history kill millions and tens of millions these um, atrocities are still being done to this day and so I think that's something important to speak out on and at the same time helping bring to light the possibilities forward that include, yeah, shared liberation, shared security, and resilience and well-being for all of the people. Um, for all the people who, like, mean to do well and I think would be interested in taking the olive branch approach um given time and circumstances um it ends up being a little bit of a, just a question of economically how do we support that much more people and um i think the answer stems from and begins to come if you spend less on weapons and in these extractive endeavors you can plant metaphoric seeds with homes and agriculture and society centers um, that allow people to thrive and help out in this more global world situation we're in where um, we need to adapt quickly to also avoid the biggest negative aspects that will come from climate change and a changing world there where we need to be as proactive as possible and move uh, and discuss what that looks like. So this specific episode, this Peace Talks, I want to capture some of my design thinking and ideation around what this region can look like. Um, and I plan to use my nifty green screen um, to help showcase that because some of the maps will help us look at this and can help illustrate the situation we have here. So um, first of all, the maps of how this land was split up the last 150 years where the land has been taken over from by Israel and um, this movement to have a Jewish state and city there. Um, and some of this land was taken over violently and the UN says is, says and has been discussed and tried to get 
uh, money and wealth back for the Palestinian people because of the the crimes that were committed there. Um, I mean, these are things that we've seen many times over and has led to, yeah, millions of millions of deaths and um, is really kind of crazy to think about it when you sit and you think about that and that has a lot of how power in this world has been attained up to this point. Um, Okay. Okay, I think the important thing to begin thinking about here is what does each side want? Um, from the Palestinian standpoint, from the different cultures and the makeup of the country of Israel, and um, the the makeup of land that allows them to get, I guess, what they want. So. Um, I think I'm like neutral on the, well, let me just explain, I guess, the both sides and then we'll get to how I feel. I feel is less important. I'm just a dude disguised as a dude trying to be another dude. Trying to do, trying to be a girl boss. Um, so, I mean, I think makes sense is security, um, ability to raise family and engage in your culture um, that these are things people want and the parts of attachment seem to be um, this holy area I'm in wanting to have a city there and a, in a state in that holy land um, which goes back like thousands of years right and I'm not an exact expert on on history I've looked at it a little bit I think it's fine for a people to want a home. You just have to acknowledge if other people want a home as well and want their to be like respected and like, um, and for past mistakes made things up. And, you know, like as a people, you would think that um yeah just for like who you are and where you are they wouldn't want to like kill you so to end that i think there needs to be a dialogue and world leaders need to come out um and offer a solution and then engage in talks with people of those communities and of your own community about if they also believe this can bring peace and what else it might need, um, but offer that possibility of a solution. And so I think there's, there's a few different ways to look at this, but that needs from both sides can be met. 
and um and it can be done in a way that yeah respects calls from both people so i need to look at a map let's look at this map together all right so let's look at how the current borders and state is set up um we have to talk about how uh this plot of land uh came to be um mostly written by kind of the like global north treaties a lot of um when you look at uh like these used to be smaller groups and tribes and peoples and someone else a lot of the times came through and try to like map them and that is similar to this area which used to be um more like that and um i guess if you look at the history at different times going back hundreds going back thousands it looks it like it flows and it it changes um and um and it was more in the 19 starting in 1900 1910 or so um a movement since then to create Israel as a as a state and a place um as a Jewish holy area and a state to exist um and though people of multiple cultures and religions do live there, there are advantages when it comes to being a Jewish person that lives in that area. And even within that, different cultures within Jewish cultures that have different advantages. Um, someone would say that, yeah, I, I probably can't talk too much more because that's, I don't know like a whole lot deeper than that um and we're just gonna look at this area and the parts that um i think make sense to people so if we look at this now gaza is this area that is being bombed um recently and it is part of palestine um as an area uh, the other part of Palestine, though, is this is considered the, like, West Bank area, which um, touches some of these, the, this river. Um, and is the other part, but this is the area where there are settlers. So of Palestine, Palestinians who live there, um, there are people coming in just like taking homes. And then the military backs them up, uh, is my understanding of the human rights issue. And kind of, when you think back to it, this all used to be kind of, I mean, it all used to be Palestine and then it was... Um, during the Nakba, the the a year where is they just took land, they attacked tribes, and pushed people away, um, and then uh, over time have been just taking more land. Um, uh, which is like that is colonizer behavior because what colonizer look at a situation and like the aim of taking it for their own and without empathy and care for other people who live there um and they some a lot of times they get there through dehumanization and making them the other and spreading propaganda and so media 
um, has had a hold on a lot of things um, throughout history. And I think one of the reasons this is still an issue to this day as um, something that media has ignored um, and acts to silence conversation that this is still happening to this day. And a lot of times I think um, they, to the detriment of like Jewish sentiment, they, people say that you're being anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish by calling these things out. Um, but I think when you call out serious topics and you try to just ignore them by calling them anti-Semitic, you, in the nature of that, belittle those words in the conversation because I'm not trying to bring harm to any people or hate or miss um, bias. I think respecting the needs of what the different sides want, which is probably homes, um, access to resources and eventual infrastructure to possible ways that they can continue to have well-being and resilience in their communities and build them out. Um, I mean, that's like the jobs, careers, but like, I think going deeper than that. Um, and the security and a narrative and culture in the region that is thinking about um, positive and safety and building peace for current and future generations. We've seen in peace movements before that um, huge swings in sentiment can happen through the movement of groups who care and um, and so I think having faith that that is possible um, and working to believe in that future and build that future versus one that uh, includes uh, bombing thousands of people tens of thousands of people all right so let's look at this region together um, we have Israel which is just under Lebanon in Syria and to the west of Jordan and uh, Egypt is um, what is down here um, and looking at this region it's kind of chopped up in a weird way and the calls that I'm hearing are from the river to the sea Palestine will be free and I actually don't know if like people who want in Israel like as a nation have chance I'm sure there are actually many chants and many in uh, multiple languages actually um, but my understanding of the desire is like a country that also includes Jerusalem and so uh, I think it's set up in a way which Jerusalem's like almost like kind of like a like a fortress e city right yeah it's like in the, the mountains um, and we're like the other major cities Tel Aviv I guess is one I've heard before um Netanya I feel like uh mm -hmm. um 
And then, okay, so from the river to the sea, the river being called there is this one. Um, that's also on the border with Jordan. Um, and so, uh, I feel like the name should be on the river, no? I know it goes up more north more. Okay, let's look, let's look. Um, this is like the adult version of playing Where's Waldo? Treaty line, but what's the river name? This is the river of question. Is it called the Jordan River? Am I like a Nikan Um I won't forget that again. Uh, okay. There it is. All right. Okay. We'll go back. So, under Lebanon, there are two ways I see to make these knees met. And. I'm gonna stumble through them. So looking at the country here, there are, I think, two different ways to make these knees met. Um, a country that goes from the Jordan River to the sea, um, and a country that includes Jerusalem, and that space and resources can be secured by both sides to create homes and infrastructure and place for their people. And I think in the nature of creating that, I have to say that this wouldn't be able to happen immediately. I think the trees can be drafted and the conversations and the maps of how that infrastructure can be made, can be started. Um, but in the meantime, there's gonna be people that it's gonna make sense to have them live somewhere that currently has that infrastructure. So I just wanna start at the bat by saying that, but that in those spaces that we choose, obviously, then livelihoods and um, goals around building those futures become available. Um, that becomes a mix. I think just to answer it right now, how you pay for that is like you flip the switch on like military spending and transition it rather quickly like around the world i think if we like if we did that around security and infrastructure and resources in a more holistic human-centered way planet-centered even because some of these things like we need to do um that is how you do that and the nice thing about regenerative systems which is what's beyond sustainability because if we're thinking about sustainability it is a system that's able to secure and prolong itself and regenerative society is a system like that goes further than that and creates new seeds of potential in abundance that builds up the whole system. Should I start with the, what I think makes the most sense? Which is taking the, an area north of Jerusalem and then going up is Palestine and then Jerusalem and down is Israel. You could say and think that um,
does the Dead Sea and does these southern areas, is this still considered the Jordan River? And what's a country that includes Gaza um, and is south of Jerusalem? Is that still considered from the river to the sea? And thinking through this region overall um, can make the needs of both those met. Now, we can look at a resource map of this region to get a better sense on what does that mean. Um, of course, there are going to be government officials that are going to complain about the division and that's where there's a conversation to be had around um what are the needs and resources i i don't know we're already giving so many resources to that area that like we what we really need is security and stability in the region so that the resources can be set on long-term infrastructure and work on that rather than division and war um, and power grabs by like elected officials. Like we need to be beyond that. Thank you very much. And I think these are ideas of how we can make it happen. Now I'm just out here taking my limited knowledge on the region of cultures um, and trying to come up with solutions. In my head, this seems like a straightforward path, but I bet there's a thousand things I'm missing. So feel free to list those out. Um, I am curious, like right now, there's what they're calling the humanitarian pause I think they called it that just so that Israel would agree because they're trying to win some information war and so they don't want to like use ceasefire and they want to go on with their war and bombings and I, I think it's just that like the government officials think they can get away with it and it is a current situation where like those who are president right now like aren't being kicked out for trying to grab power themselves. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, like atrocities happened and it was an attack on security. Um, I just, I don't know if I would want to go to like the family members first, like, there's, I feel like, better places to take leadership from other than just going to, like, such blatant attacks of force and show of force and, like, you're not, I think, leading, you have to have peace in mind and you, there are those actors pushing from multiple areas that have that in mind um, to lead to the possibility of the most security and stability. And yeah, I guess this native actors have reason to fight that because that people are acting in their own self-interest to try to hold on to power, um, which is such a shame, such a shame. Yeah. Anything, um, I do think the world has the, the possibility, the, some of the capability to house millions of people in, into better and stable situations, like, um, like in certain areas, there's a surplus of food, which is one of the major aspects of being able to like help people be fine. 
and shelter. And if we really needed to, I think we could build tent and temporary cities and locations to be maybe even themselves like community areas. And like additionally to that, build more long-term infrastructure too. Um, of being able to house people. I don't think it's a matter of the amount of resources when it comes to that. Um, some areas have like heating issues and climate disasters issues and like humanitarian issues of being able to take care and make sure people are mentally doing okay and adapting. I think that's just like another call of like action for humanity though to move resources around because we're looking for an abundant, a resilient, and a regenerative society. We we got to strive for something like better and cooler and more stable than what we have and then we can go into sustain mode if we want. Um, currently it's been more of an extractive mode and in certain ways that has, yeah, led to various, um, negative, terrible things. Uh, I have hope for humanity. I didn't expect to be making a video addressing humanity today. Um, I mean, I want to, I want this to reach as many people as possible. I want to talk solutions. I'm kind of, yeah, eager in talking to other leaders out there and building energy towards positive impact change and solutions. So anyways, we can do that. I'm on board and um, I felt like I couldn't sit out any longer and that I wanted to do something that went further than just like a post and that one of my skills is trying to come up with solutions and think um, hopefully and think out of the box. Though I actually think this one's kind of rather straightforward. Um, and when you talk to, when you get to understand the situation more and more, I think, yeah, it does become more clear what's happening here. So I hope that we're seeing more and more people see that and that this ceasefire continues, that the hostages, no, that a ceasefire is called and conversations towards real peace are discussed. I'm hopeful for long-term permanent humanitarian need and supplies into the area that if that there's going to be refugees in this situation that we can find stable places to house them while we figure the situation that they're able to be supported in making that journey um this is also just like a shout out call for larger amounts of liberation, which we could have continued talks on areas that powerful groups cut off from the world um, or take advantage of that I don't think need to be there. Um, that all the hostages are safe and healthy and are released and that the people who have the power to make 
broader sweeping change in this area and on the budget of how we as United States are funding this genocide in operation, like that's a whole nother tangent I want to jump into is um, we're spending billions of dollars um, helping set up and the reasons different government officials do that is like actually like widely different um, here in America. There's like religious reasons that are about like the rapture all the way to um i mean wanting to support a people to live in their religious land um but for some reason along the way trying to talk about it more nuancedly and diving deeper into the history and trying to change that um You've just been able to be called out as like anti-Semitic. I think for a long time. Um, or it was just like not even like engaged as. Um, something people wanted to learn more about just because it was such a electric topic like we have laws that say you can't even like divest or sanction what was it divest sanction or speak out against israel and like people have been doxxed and like speaking out against israel yeah And it's so interesting that we're like, I mean, thank the internet that times are changing and there are people willing and learning to act more from love and care. <coughs> Those are my thoughts. Just think about what you could do with a billion dollars a year you could build housing tens of thousands probably not hundreds of thousands maybe depending on the housing but like from the ground up both here in america probably if you cut that spending in half spend half of it back on america half of it in security in that region as allies like i'm not trying to not be an ally i think i want to be a friend and show up and support for people who have had your back i guess that's an interesting concept because like as a country we ourselves haven't been great to other countries so it's like showing loyalty to countries have had your back when you were doing those bad things like you like for when you think about it as an actual friend you like it doesn't quite have a one-to-one -one because we're talking like atrocities and like espionage but you like try to like forgive and move on maybe sometimes i don't know but when it comes down to like the population of the people, I think of them as like allies and I care and want to see them protected and secure and able to live amazing, beautiful lives. I just want to help reshape what that really means and not just give it one-sidedly. I think we can do that and the more we can think about collaborative, like, win-wins, the more at the global level we are able to help build for a beautiful, stable society. And, like, maybe we didn't ever got there if, like, climate change didn't exist. But, like, it does. And, like, 
the best case scenario takes us all working together to build that world um, and stabilize and make sure that along that path that we're not just leaving behind large chunks of people um, like like that has to be the vision um, and I think it's the only way that we can work to also make amends and then give resources back to the groups, our ancestors and our country's forefathers themselves imperialized and took over uh, resources from. And that's how I feel about that. Anything else? Anything else? From a a strategy standpoint I think we need to continue having conversations and spreading media and calling for peace I am hopeful that these people that we're persuading around calling for a ceasefire are also with time and conversations then interested in calling for a uh, better solution in the region, including, I guess my solution was a two state system. Um, which I think, I mean, to me makes more sense. And um, not saying that they don't work together though, and that they don't share resources. But setting up two separate government structures and leadership to be able to work together on those deeper parts. That gives more of a representation for the different cultures and area. Um, I actually don't know too much about Lebanon or Jordan. Um, and really the region as a larger whole um, and something I can work to broaden. Uh, it's just like, I don't, it's hard to do, right? Like, it's a lot to learn. Um, I took a whole semester class on the sub-Saharan African area. And, um, like I learned a lot, but I was also like doing research projects, like talking to other students, doing research projects, had like a professor with dozen plus years of experience working in the region and helping educate and teach. And so what harms us here and probably built in is the fact that our education system doesn't teach us at all about these regions or about like um, where the budget goes for our own country or like cultures really around the world. Um, and because a lot of people lack that, it's like daunting to try to have your own deeper perspective. And so you fall in line with closer to the news and media you consume or those in your life that have been sharing vocally their opinions that feel somewhat close to your own. Mm, but it's, it's interesting, the information world and political and public social change, fascinating, right? Um, and yeah, so we'll be talking more about this over time. Um, I'm curious to hear from others, of course, and let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Thank you for caring. Thank you for all those out there doing positive, good work, taking care of themselves and others and doing their best. I will see you on the next video, which I don't know what I have planned next, so stay tuned. Bye!